my name is Courtney Spees. I'm a territory manager for Clark Dietrich Metal Framing. Um, I cover all of Metro New York into the Hudson Valley, New Jersey, a little Eastern Pennsylvania. Um, and I've been working in this business for 23 years. Uh, my name is Sarah Nichols. I'm the director of operations for Robert Ayard Incorporated. Uh, we are based out of Frederick, Maryland. And technically you could say I've been in the construction industry all of my life. Um, but I'm going on 11 years here with Robert Ayer Incorporated, so. My name is Christine Basha. I run and own JD Traditional Industries. We are a drywall and interiors contractor in New York. Uh, our work is mostly in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. Our offices are located out in Ronkonkoma on Long Island. And I've been running this company for 17 years. I was born into a construction family. Uh, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father were all in construction. I worked for my father uh, growing up as a child in the family business. And I again worked for him since from 2000 to 2007 when he very suddenly passed away. At that point, I stepped in to run the company and since then have grown it four times the size. Construction chose me, I like to say that. Um, so truthfully, I have a chance meeting with a, at the time, a sales manager for Dietrich Metal Framing when they were owned by Worthington. And um, we just had some friendly conversation for some amount of hours and I didn't realize it then, but I was on an unofficial interview um, and I, at the time, was 23 in between jobs, and I didn't really know what to do with myself. And this gentleman ended up offering me uh, the opportunity to come in and interview formally for a light gauge metal framing manufacturer. Um, I had no idea what that was, but he seemed fun and it seemed to have an energy about it. So I went on a series of interviews and got hired as an inside sales rep and never looked back. I am a second generation uh each contractor now uh, my parents have owned and operated robert ayard incorporated for almost 50 years before working in the construction industry i was in the hospitality industry for 14 years i lived in fayetteville arkansas for seven of those years and decided that it was time to move back home after working in a restaurant locally here i decided to take the plunge and figure out what the family business was all about so I came in and started part-time here, just kind of dabbled my feet to see what it was all about. And now I'm full-time and 11 years later, I'm still here and flourishing, so. What makes me the most proud is that the industry is constantly evolving. The thing that I find most fascinating is that the manufacturers come up with different technology. It's just incredible. The system continue to advance and the cladding options are becoming almost endless. But I would say the proudest moment is after you worked on a job and you're driving around and you brought that project to fruition and years later you're driving around with families and friends in the car and all of a sudden you can say, hey, look over there. You know, we did that building 10 years ago and look how beautiful it still is. So that's a great moment, not just for me and family and friends, but also our entire company as well. I was brought up to believe in pride of ownership. If you're going to do something, try to do it the best that you possibly can and be proud of it. So I need to put the work in to be the best that I can. I need to incorporate what I do to run JD traditional and push that um, pride of ownership right down through all the other employees that work for me. Uh, construction, it's, it's dynamic, it's enigmatic, um, it's challenging. I like to solve puzzles and that's really all we do all day long. So it, it's the sense of accomplishment that you feel after completing projects or even in the middle of them and solving all the issues that come along with. You know, construction in general is by design aspirational, right? You're always looking up. You know, there's not really a place around even New York City where I happen to be a territory manager that I can't look and point to something, even if I'm traveling with my kids and say, hey, I built that. 
you know, so it's sort of a wonderful feeling and the fruits of everyone's labor involved are everywhere. They're abound. You can see them wherever you go. So it's a people business. There aren't robots running around building buildings. They're real carpenters. They're real contractors. And with any sort of relationship business like construction really is, you get involved with people naturally, right? A lot of my job isn't done on a job site or in a lumber yard or inside of a plant. A lot of my job is done getting to know and learn people and get close to them and understand them. And then you become intertwined. The challenge I think is sort of separating. When you become a problem solver and you become a part of people's lives, they end up calling you for everything. And I promise you half of the things they're asking me are just things I'm going to make an outbound call to find out for them. Um, and I want to be that point person, but being that point person all the time becomes taxing. I think personally for me, the biggest challenge right now is our worker shortage, finding enough work for our employees and employees for the work. So as soon as we have good weather, um, we have several large contracts that were postponed due to the pandemic and they're all looking to release at one time and currently right now we don't have enough men to um you know fulfill that requirement so we're actively hiring and pursuing skilled labor one of the most challenging and yet satisfying is being a woman in the new york construction industry and gaining the respect of the contractors in new york city i work day to day with my team every day and when you're out there and people see that you're a worker, you believe in what you do, you know what you do, you gain that respect, which is hugely gratifying. I work every day on how to manage everyone, making sure that we are being efficient and productive. Uh, currently, I'm working on honing my management skills and finding better ways for our team to be more efficient and productive, utilizing tools and systems that are available for our use. Earlier point, time management's always a struggle. So, so many things happen inside of a day. It's important to really try to give everything its a needed amount of time without extra time being given. Um, you know, that and, and truly, I think for everyone in any industry, it's listening. It's easy to just fire off and tell people what you know or quickly try to get them to an answer. But if you're not really listening, you're missing fine, fine details that are super important. Being diplomatic. Um, I tend to go very hard and passionately for something that I really believe in. And sometimes you just have to throttle back. And that's a learning skill that I don't always master. So to break free of the stereotype, you have to know your stuff. You can't go out there and just be a pretty face or somebody who smiles and gets in somewhere. You really have to know what you're talking about. You have to know how to be one of the guys at times. You have to know when to put them in their place and gain that respect? Listen, stereotypically women are emotional, right? That is sort of a stereotype we carry just because we're women. Um, we aren't necessarily emotional, we're passionate. And I think that women um, convey passion differently than men. And I think when we convey passion, it often is construed as emotion. Um, so, you know, that's always sort of a challenge and, and, an, and a disadvantage, but at the same time, an advantage, right? I do feel that that bit of emotion that comes with the passion we convey, it sort of makes us more involved um, and a little more invested in what we're saying and doing. I honestly have been welcomed with pretty open arms as far as in our entire industry as a whole. I, I do, again, have issues sometimes working with big GCs who have been doing it for a very long time and you know I think once you get to work with them a little more they understand who you are it helps proving yourself I think is a, a, a big deal and that takes a little bit of time for whomever you're working with but I think just 
plowing through and not worrying about the stereotypes. I honestly don't think of stereotypes any day of the week. Never. 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 I do. I mean, naturally, a lot of people ask about it because I am one, right? So certainly it does get a little tiresome. Um, you know, I, I try to shy away from it, not because I don't want to talk about it. Certainly, I'm proud of that. But at the end of the day, it isn't about being a woman or a man or anyone. It's about how well you do your job. I will talk about being a woman in the industry for as long as anyone will listen. But I think most people at this point are comfortable with the idea that there are a lot of women and we belong here. And I think it's more about now, what do we bring to the table as professionals and less about our gender? Um, I, I would never turn down an opportunity to um, promote and or tell any woman, um, don't be afraid, try it. You, you might find it intriguing, you might not like it, but you never know. It's kind of like I did, dip your toe in, see what happens. I mean, there's just so many different areas and capacities of where you could be within the industry as a whole that, um, you know, you, you might find an area you like. One of the groups that I belong to, um, I'm actually president of Women Builders Council. One of our initiatives is we have an ambassador's council and we mentor these younger women. We also gave them their own group so they can come together with like uh, positive and negative experiences and have a sounding board for each other. And they're women from many different companies. It's not just one company and it's not just small companies. It's some of the biggest and most known companies in New York, just some of the smaller ones. Closing my first big contract. Um, I worked for my father for many years, but more on the administrative side. I never got into the weeds of the actual running of the company until after he passed away. Then it was a, somewhat of a learning curve, but that first contract that I dove into, negotiated back and forth, terms, conditions, and actually closing it. It was a multi-million dollar contract and I will never forget. I, I almost actually screamed. I was so happy. Um, in 2019, I received the Member of the Year Award for EMA. Um, and it was definitely the highlight of my career thus far. Um, you know, being a a young buck, as I still call myself, surrounded by people who have been in the Eves industry for, you know, 20, 30, my parents 50 years, uh, I was truly honored and uh, humbled by receiving that award. And it, it meant the world to me to bring it back to our company, to be able to show my dad, who has a great reputation, and say, look, I'm making a name for myself. So, you know, that was, that was a proud moment for sure. I rode a crane, um, that was really cool. So I happened to be on a project that um, was a very tall tower in New Jersey and I had the opportunity to get up in a crane one day. And at the time it was 900 feet above ground. Um, so it, it was certainly thrilling, um, but it was definitely the most memorable moment. Mm -hmm.